watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. Rebellion with Evil Conduct. How are you guys? I'm fine. Introduce yourselves. I'm Ray. I'm playing the drums. I'm uh, Franz, Franz Rotten, and I play the bass. My name is Han, and I sing all the songs along. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have kind of been nicknamed the Dutch Last Resort. How is that? I mean, you being 100% working class oi skinhead from the 80s, starting then how have you heard that that people are kind of nicknaming you guys that uh, sorry uh, just one correction um, the last resort is uh, the uh, the English evil conduct you mean <laughs> 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 yeah it's kind of a rival thing wait a minute no no, no rivalry no rivalry uh, between them and us but yeah it was a, it was a, it was a name that was given at a certain uh, moment because our songs in the beginning were also not that fast and that's maybe the reason why they nicknamed us the Dutch Last Resort. Yeah. yeah. It's like if you think about it, wait, the Last Resort, did they start? They started in the 70s. Yeah, they, they yeah. were they were inspiration for us to start a band. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we uh, came a little bit later than the original Oi bands. We started up as an Oi band in uh, 84. And uh, of course, we were inspired by all the uh, bands from the Years before, Four Skins, Last Resort, Infrared, Cockney Rejects, uh, Angelic Upstarts, all that lot. So, uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's great that uh, now our name is among those as being, uh, yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah, not the main, but uh, with uh, at least on a big stage at a good time. So that's uh, great. guys excited to see the business tribute tonight obviously Roy will be singing one of the songs are you you guys are are you singing a song in the business tribute tonight no no we are not uh, taking part of this uh, thing but there are, there are already enough singers uh, in the business tribute uh, band who are you guys excited to see tonight in the business tribute obviously that's something that you you must be going to watch um, yeah I'm gonna watch it I haven't seen it yet but uh, of course it will be probably a good show, but uh, of course it will not be the same. It's not the without. same. Yeah, big yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, did you guys ever have a chance to tour with the business? Being not, not tour, but we played a few gigs uh, together with them, and uh, we we saw them quite a few times live. So uh, that that was good. Can you guys share one of your favorite stories about Mickey Fitz? Uh, yeah. I don't have that many, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we, we, um, we played together, but we did not have that uh, intensive uh, conversations uh, yeah. to no. talk about uh, something special. Yeah.
guess you also actually work as a tattoo artist, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. How did you get started in that? Uh, I got started in it uh, maybe in the middle of the 80s, to the end of the 80s, yeah. How was that back then when kind of tattoos weren't as widely accepted as they are today? And, and was it difficult coming up? I know in America there was a time in the 80s when it was yeah. actually illegal to be tattooing. Uh, at that time it was just a very um, underground, uh, underground yeah. small yeah. thing, you know, when it was, it was not easy uh, to, to have, make a living for, out, out of it, yeah. especially where I live. You know, it, it's too uh, much small cities around yeah. at that time. I only had the, did the tattoos in the beginning with some friends and psychobillies or skinheads or punks. And within a few years later, it, it began to uh, evolve, how do you say? Yeah. yeah. And then at a certain point, I got a professional artist, yeah. Did you apprentice under anybody when you were getting started as an artist or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I had many friends when I started and uh, <laughs> not many are left, but, but they also say, uh, always say, also uh, when you look at uh, our band, it's, it's very lonesome at the top. <laughs> being very comical people from Holland I've, I've never had the pleasure to go to the Netherlands but what was it like there coming up in in the 80s in the scene of, of oi um, how, how was that there like was it difficult was there a lot of fights at the time was there a lot of other oi bands or was it uh, with, with us, uh, me and my brother, uh, 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 Francie was uh, also, uh, we, we met each other very early in 1980 or something, but we were uh, inf influenced by uh, the, the two-tone uh, thing at that time. Yeah. And then we were so interested in uh, the skinhead scene. skinhead scene, which was also a little bit uh, within the ska bands from two-tone. Yeah. Huh? And so we uh, also bought other kinds of records. And then we came uh, also um, into the oil music, yeah. That's cool. And, uh, yeah. So yeah. was it at a time, I mean, back then I, I hear from a lot of bands, especially, you know, here in the UK, that scene, it was it was a little difficult because there were the Nazi skinheads. And it was, it was something that was, um, people didn't understand, they automatically thought skinheads meant Nazi. And it, it, if you know about skinhead culture, it doesn't. Did you guys have that in, in Holland as well, where there were... Nazi skinheads and how was that? Uh, yeah, to the general public, every skinhead was a was a Nazi. Yeah. So uh, that was something. Uh, yeah, if you couldn't accept that, then uh, even if you weren't a Nazi, you kind of had to accept that. There were uh, yeah. that stereotype, and uh, but yeah, well, uh, I was not. We were not gonna uh, put it out to every single person that. We weren't Nazis, uh, so yeah, well, that was the way it was. And uh, if people thought uh, of us like that, it was their choice and not ours and uh, fuck off, we would say, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that is difficult. I, I see it uh, where I live in Los Angeles, people that know nothing about that subculture, they they think, oh, skinhead is, is Nazi. And it's like, oh. no, it's, it's not at all, actually. Actually, the original skinheads were not racist. They're anti-racist. So. No, no, no. Had nothing to do with politics, uh, really. No. Yeah. But just young, young kids' rebellion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, listening to uh, uh, all kinds of black music. Yeah. At the end of the, everybody uh, who is a little bit uh, interested in, the, in this uh, skinhead cul culture knows it really. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all uh, fucked up uh, some way uh, in the uh, end of the seventies. And this spread within the, the newspapers and on yeah. television and some stupid wankers who thought this could be my thing. Yeah. They just fucked it up, you know? Yeah. 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 That's sad. So how is it?
it today? Obviously, the culture today is is people. Oh, are... oh, I got a cramp in my leg. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, today, today with the culture, it's obviously people are a lot more informed. And so how is it today with when people come out to the shows? Is there still violence persisting at, at the shows today? No, no, nothing at all. Not much. No, no. Yeah, well, can always uh, happen something, but not really. No, no big fights. No, it's, it's OK. It can, it can happen, you know, yeah. where a lot of people come together. They can start a fight, but it has nothing to do with the types of people that are in in the venue. It's, it's not. I don't think there's this, there's anything going on there. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so what do you guys have coming up for the rest of the year? Do you have anything in the works? Uh, no. At the moment, we only have uh, planned uh, a few gigs scheduled for uh, later this year, and that's about it. And then yeah, we're we're working on new songs, but we have to see. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot of the theme this weekend. A lot of the bands, when it's asked about new music, it's it'll be out when it's out. We're doing it. We're yeah, working yeah. on it because a lot of bands like yourselves, of course, you don't want to phone it in and put something out that's not a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, yeah. It takes a little bit of time, yeah. And uh, but I think we will uh, uh, in the near future we will do. Uh, Seven inch, or inch or something. Seven inch or something, yeah. yeah, with a video clip. and Yeah. So then uh, there will be a, a little bit already. That's awesome. So yeah. have you started working on those songs already or you're... Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Have you recorded them or how far along are we in the process? No, we didn't no. record them yet, no. We, uh, we are glad that we have some lyrics to the song, so... Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's oh. normally the, the biggest issue, getting the lyrics done. Oh, it's not so <laughs> difficult. You, 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 I always have very good lyrics. It's more like um, I'm walking down the street uh, with my Doc Martens on my feet. <laughs> That's the That's normal the start, of, start of, of every song. <laughs> 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 All, right. All right. Well, we'll close with that. Thank you guys so much for taking the time today. Yeah. All right. I'll be You're walking welcome. down the street at Rebellion with my Doc Martens <laughs> on my feet. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay. We are Evil Conduct and you're watching Last Rockers TV. Oh,